Right, I'm going to start recording as well now. Um, and whilst I think about it, I need to set the preferences up. So that I don't forget this. Right, I just changed the settings there. So, um, as I was saying, the documents uh, for um, the lab notes is now live with GitHub pages. Uh, and there will be a link in the repo uh, to that so that you can see it. But later on, I'm going to have to refactor it. So, what I probably, what I was thinking, I mean, I don't know what you think, guys and girls, but. I'm thinking maybe um, what we should probably do is I'd like the lab stuff. I mean, effectively, the lab stuff can be broken into three parts. There's the black crab stuff, uh, which is the rust stuff. Um, there is the generic examples, the HDL examples, and the kind of the book of examples, if you like. And then there's the particular board in question. In this case, it's the ICE uh, logic deck. So there's three different sections. So I think it should all be keyed from the book point of view, the book of the examples. And then somehow I need to link in to the other two. Now, in terms of um, how that will work, it's because the way that the code and things is embedded um, in the documentation, it needs to be able to access that. So I think what the book will probably do is talk generically the example book will talk generically, the lab book, if you like, will talk generically about the examples. But at the start, there will be sections for the different um, boards and the software. And those will link to separate books, um, which will be in the repositories for Black Crab One, its own repository, and each board will be its own repository with its own book so there'll be one book which is the example stuff which links to the others uh, so in terms of the setup that's unique to the individual board so that's kind of the way i'm thinking of um, arranging it because there will be board specific stuff that's unique to the board um, whereas the example stuff should be common across all of the boards I think that's quite important so eventually I know this is all sitting right now in the MyStorm ICE logic deck uh, repo um, there's also a separate black crab repo currently but what what I think we'll end up with is at least three repositories. So there'll be the uh, Ice Logic Deck repository for the hardware. There will be the um, AHDL book, effectively, which is what we're producing with the LAN notes uh, in its own repository. And then there will be the Black Crab um, 
repository, which is really um, the firmware centric parts of it. And then the the book will 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 reside in the A HDR area and bring it all together. What do you think, Laurie? Do you think that will work? That, that way of arranging things? It's the only sensible way I can think. And then later when we have other boards that support the book, um, that will be a, a separate repository that's linked in to the main book. And the only difference is really things like um, the setup and stuff. I had fun with the setup as well. I'd forgotten uh, some of the gotchas. Um, I was struggling, for example, um, getting it to talk to um, getting it to talk to the um, firmware because um, first of all, I mean, I'm using some different um, vendor ID codes because we've got the MyStorm ID codes now I'm, I'm just using one of those at the moment I need to sort those out properly but the um, one of the problems I had was uh, it wasn't so much a UDEV problem it was um, uh, it was I had things like the access problems I'd forgotten about on Linux because I hadn't used it in a while and um, what I didn't realize is that I for some reason I had to restart in order to see the changes even though I'd added my own user to the uh, dial out group uh, which you need to do to get um, permissions to talk to the TTY ACM one or whatever um, that wasn't that wasn't working until I actually restarted the uh, the machine which is weird I wasn't aware of that before um, do I have to kind of go back through the uh, Mystorm forum stuff? Um, Laurie says, sounds plausible. Okay. I don't know if that's a vote of confidence or not. Um, so yeah, I had fun with that as well. That, that, I struggled with that for a while be because of the restart required. I thought you just had to, you know, have a new uh, new session, you know, new terminal session or something to see that. But that wasn't working. It had me going around in circles for a while. So that's been fun. Um, what other changes? There are some changes on the hardware that I've been making this week. I mean, what I'm going to talk about in a minute is the um the firmware the black crap uh because i'm going to show you what i changed on that i've had to change some of the stuff for a number of reasons and i'll come back around to that in a minute because it's quite important but the um hardware i've been changing um i'm just trying to think what the changes were versus last week i think um I've changed the UART pins to yeah so what I've done is I've, I've the old UART pins are now the um, hyper RAM or hyper flash selection pins and the new UART pins are uh, some of the IO pins that were on the second part of the mezzanine connector I mean, it doesn't make any difference it's just on the other other side of the connector um, we still have one free on the hyper flash side of the mezzanine connection one selection there what I, I tell you what I was thinking about is I was going through um, I think it'd be nice to have uh, a module Um, the Wi-Fi module on the mezzanine card as an option 
And what I was thinking of using was the um, ESP32 C3. Um, the C3 doesn't have Michael Python support yet, although I believe um, uh, they're working on that. Um, the good thing about the ESP32 C3 is that it has Bluetooth support as well as Wi-Fi, whereas the S3, S2 doesn't. Um, it's also RIS-5, uh, which is kind of nice. And if you are ever doing a combination of RIS-5 uh, soft CPU inside the FPGA fabric and you had this C5, there might be some advantages there from a compiler point of view. Um, it also has some interesting QSPI arrangements, which I'm uh, looking into at the moment. Potentially it's slightly faster, but the processor itself isn't faster. I think it runs at, um, is it 120 megahertz? As opposed to the ESP32, which is the extensive one, which runs at about 240, or up to 240. Um, but that looks like the baby, and I'm hoping that I can get that in a module form as an option on the mezzanine layer. Uh, that has some extra SRAM and ROM, etc., on board. And it does support, the MicroPython is supported on that. I noticed there's a new version of MicroPython out um, the last few weeks, and I was having a look at some of the changes on there. One of the things they've added is um, better Quad SPI support, but not on the ESP32 stuff, that's only on the um, on a limited number of um, ports or platforms. I think uh, STM32 is one of those, but um, yeah, so there have been some changes there, which is quite interesting. Um, Laurie was saying, did you uh, reload UDEV? Yes, I did, on a number of occasions. Um, and in I, I, I made a new uh, UDEV set of rules for uh, it's kind of my storm set of rules and what that does is it tries to issue a it uses the new manufacturer my storm manufacturer ID the vendor ID as well as the uh, product ID and it tries to run the you know the STTY um, raw settings although I'm not convinced that that's working yet. Um, so I need to play around with that a bit more. The So the ESP32 thing, I think it'd be a nice option for the mezzanine. And what I was thinking about is how that integrates into the system. Because I think it would be nice to be able to do orchestration from MicroPython. So even though the MicroPython wouldn't ever be used for things like the real-time stuff, um, it could orchestrate and handle things like networking, etc. And I'm just wondering the best way. I mean, there will be a UART link potentially to the um, STM32 and at least an SPI. But that SPI could go to either the FPGA or the STM32. So um, it'd be interesting to see how well that works and what the best best way of doing that is. Um, I'm probably going to need to experiment with that a little. Um, I'm not sure how much advantage there would be of it going directly to the um, to the ICE 40 or the FPGA, whether there would be any real benefits to that. Um, but it might be neat to be able to do that. And the question here is then, does it become a master or is it a slave? As we mentioned last time when we spoke about this. And that's still something I'm trying to fathom how that would work. Um, 
you know, we could use maybe some async IO, which is supported in MicroPython, which is, which you don't get in Circuit Python. Um, so that async IO might work quite nicely with the slave stuff, but you know, I haven't played around with that enough yet. Um, the stuff that I did before was very basic, so um, I'm going to have to have a poke around with that and have a look. I'll try and make the mezzanine addition uh, flexible enough that we can kind of do it either way. Anyhow, that's that stuff. Um, there was a few pin changes and stuff on the tiles. I've now standardised, I think, on the tile pinouts and um, things like the separate interrupts for each. Uh, probably three analog channels for each now rather than just the two. I think I've solved the problem that enables me to do that. And on the super tile, the extra two are actually presented not on the interrupt and um, reserve pin, because the reserve pin is no longer reserved, it's a mixed signal pin, in order to cater for having three mixed signal pins. And therefore I've moved those to the um, reset enable pins for the super tile. Um, Yeah, I think I've covered the hardware changes there. Next, 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 next. So um, let's let's deal with uh, the Rust firmware stuff, the black crap. So in order to, so what I did was I checked out the, um, I think it's the ICE Logic Deck branch of black crap let me just check actually um, tell me this won't it if I look under here Yeah, it's really annoying that it doesn't show that somewhere. Hold on, if I go here, how is that, what's the text like? Sorry, what is the um, <coughs> what is the character size and text looking like on the um, stream? By the way, is it? Um, readable yeah so we're on the ice logic deck branch i really wished it showed that in the ide there must be a way of seeing that easily i don't know why it doesn't show that Uh, Laurie says it's readable to him. Okay, well, if you need me to up the size, just shout. So, um, I checked it out, and then I thought, well, how am I going to have this operational on the um, on a Linux workstation? So. One of the things that I did is this. I moved from the GDB multi arch um, runner using Open OCD to Probe Run. And I thought, well, if I'm going to do this and do all the other changes, I may as well get this done as well. So I switched over to the Probe Run. So I installed the Probe Run. And in order to do that, I had to solve a whole bunch of um, of different uh, obstacles, if you like. But once I had Probe Run 
installed properly and I think what did I install it with I think it was was it with rust up or was it with cargo hold on let me see if I've got that page open I look at the probe run. Yeah, basically what you do is you use cargo. You say cargo install probe hyphen run. Uh, and there's a bunch of dependencies and stuff that you end up having to go through. Um, uh, the configuration is already here so you don't need to worry about that I have that done um, the other changes were in the cargo tommel I had to enable things like the RTT stuff so that I could see the but as soon as I got the probe run running I could unlike open OCD which I couldn't get to see the ST link version free um, I As soon as I got Probe RS working, it could see the ST Link free, which is good because I was having such a problem trying to get OCD, sorry, Open OCD, OCD, <laughs> Open OCD working with the ST Link free that I have. I just could not get the uh, Open OCD stuff working with it. But with the uh, Probe run, um, it would see the adapter, which is really cool. Um, yeah, so a few of the other things that you need to do for probe run is you need to have um, Where is it? You need this uh, Debug one I, I, I have that in the release and in the uh, the development profile um, I also had to do some changes on the RTT target and panic probe um, that the panic probe remove replaces the stuff that panic hyphen ITM used and I'm now using the direct um, output from um, from the um, SWO um, debug output which is really cool and that's now working so I mean that was a lot of fun having to change that I also have I think this is the other important one is you need the Cortex M RTI sorry I'll come back to that later uh, is it the Holt one what else did I need to change profile debug one I needed the RTT target panic probe I needed to disable the panic ITM and I had to enable the Cortex MRT that was the other thing those were the big changes okay um, there were also some knock-on effects because in order to run this um, the older version of some of the libraries I was using wouldn't work uh, let me just go back to OBS here so um, Laurie's saying, probe run installation not in your readme file in the repository yet. No, I haven't documented it. I need to look at that in a minute. The um, I wonder have I done any commits on here? I don't think I have. 
Right. What well, what worries me here is these these changes won't work with the Windows system that I was running. because that was based on Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, and it was also using open OCD. So I'm wondering here, I mean, this is the way I'm going to go in the future. Getting it working on Windows is going to be different. I'm sure there's going to be some obstacles. I know when I tried before, I couldn't get it working, but uh, it will be possible. I wonder if this should be a different branch. Hold on. check something here Let me see if this works. Bear with me a sec, Laurie. Right, have a look now, Laurie. Um, I've, ju I've just pushed a new branch called Probe RS. Take a look at that and you'll be able to see the changes. Uh, and I'll keep it on this branch for the moment. I'll, I'll keep the other stuff as it is because um, I may need to return to that. So you'll, you'll see that the libraries are different as well. Um, so I'm using newer versions of certain things. 
So, the howl has changed. Not only that, but the RTIC, or how is that pronounced? Is it called Arctic, Arctic or is it called um, RTIC? I'm not sure how it's pronounced actually. So that's changed. That was a nightmare. So I'm, I'm going to need to go through this code because, whew, crikey. Um, there was a bunch of changes in here at several levels. Our ticket itself changes. Um, we went from, I think, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 up to version 1, which is a heck of a jump. Um, and that had a whole bunch of new stuff and the new way of doing stuff. So that took me ages to work out. But it wasn't just that, because the HAL itself had changed and the F7 support had changed, I had to change a whole bunch of that as well. <sighs> and we also, I also had problems with some of the um, static mutable uh, large memory emirate area sharing which was the buffer stuff for the usb that drove me insane and i i finally managed to find a way of doing it that i don't know how but i managed to do it i'm still getting my head around it but i had to use some unsafe code in order to make it work for now there may be a way of doing it without the unsafe but i could only find a way of doing it by wrapping certain parts of that uh, usb buffer stuff with the unsafe thing but let me um let me go through some of this so some of the changes i had to make the most important thing from a, uh, an rtic point of view is that rather than you having a struct uh, called resources that's then passed which is created by the init task and then passed to the other tasks or parts of it it's now split into two parts. So what you have is what's called a shared a struct called shared, uh, and this contains all of the um, shared parts that multiple tasks may use. Okay, and then you have another one called local, and that is used for task specific. Um, so you have to split the stuff out in a, differently to how it worked before. So I've had to make that change. So these things here were things that we were sharing, bet you know, for more than one task. In addition to init, that is. <clears throat> the program ball is used because I need to see the status. Um, when we were doing the uh, dual SPI or quad SPI test, we needed to know whether it had been programmed before we attempted that because we needed to make sure that the HDL had been loaded, otherwise it's pointless. Um, some of the others are also shared. Whether that's um, those two make sense or not, I, I will come back to. But the, um, the SPI is shared because the USB needs to use the SPI, the USB task. The interrupt handler for the USB needs to use the spy or the soft spy in this case in order to program uh, the the ice 40 because that's what the soft spy is actually uh, connected to is to the programming pins on the I the ice 40 the spy pins um, so that's a shared resource as well so that's the first big change so now when we look at the uh, init here, forget this for a moment, I'll come back to that in a sec, but um, the function signature for init has changed now. Um, although the call here, the init context hasn't changed, what it returns has changed because it now returns two structures um, as well as the init monotonics, you know, as a kind of tuple if you like. So it returns the shared struct, the local struct, and the unit monotonics. And if we go down and look at the end, you'll see uh, that's exactly what's going on here. So if you look at the return from this, we are initializing the, uh, the shared structure. 
or the shared resources if you like um, and the local structure with the local resources in okay so that's different also because of that if you look at the tasks the way we pass things into the tasks are slightly different so if we look at the uh, um, the um, <coughs> The uh, SPI programming or um, the test program, the testing the SPI transfer, um, we have to pass in, in this case, we only need the shared items um, because we need to know the state of programmed because it wouldn't start doing a SPI transmission until uh, it, it knew it was programmed and then it would use the soft SPI in this case to actually talk to the FPGA. HDL. Likewise, uh, when we look at the QSPI stuff, what we pass in is programmed, obviously, is that Boolean again, which is shared, and the local, which is only used by this task, which is the QSPI driver. I know I call it DSPI. We've got to refactor some of this and get it all sorted out because it's, it's um, changed somewhat. Um, so that code hasn't changed much, although there is an issue this. I haven't tried this yet for a very simple reason. Um, as I said, there have been some API changes to the embedded HAL, in particular the F7. So the uh, uh, polling right doesn't exist anymore. Uh, so I couldn't easily change that. There is a right, not a polling right. And then you can write something that polls afterwards we don't need to deal with that at the moment but um, I've been reading about some of that and some of those changes so that that's just changed just slightly so I'm not running that at the moment uh, but we will have to deal with that um, so if we look at the main uh, driver here which is the USB interrupt driver or event driver um, obviously what we're passing in here is all of these shared uh, resources you know the program byte count header and the SPI resource as well as the local stuff which is the serial and the uh, USB CDC device so that's changed there um, everything else I think is the same and obviously I'm not I'm not spawning the DSP at the moment until I sort out that issue but everything else I think is the same obviously these parts have changed because the context here is either local or shared where we're getting these uh, references to these devices uh, to these resources um, so that's changed um, Everything else, I think, is the same. Okay, uh, and that's that. So those are the big changes. Those are the RTIC changes, effectively. Let me um, hydrate. I have a new. I got this for Christmas, actually. This is what I call a proper drink holder it's kind of strange it has this metal straw I'm not sure about that anyhow I must continue um, Laurie's saying I wonder if the RTIC API is becoming more stable well the answer is yes it damn well should be if it's become 1.0 um, they're pretty happy with it stability wise um, there is a like a, they have like a guide that talks about migrating from one to the other which I'm still going through by the way which is helpful but yeah it should be quite mature by now um, I'm still in two minds as whether we should use this moving forward or not I'm gonna I'm gonna continue with it for now because I think it does what we want but I'm also going to look at um, the async stuff as well um, and we, we may be to combine the two. So um, 
the other thing that's going on in here the other change guess what um, if you remember from last time when we looked at this what was the biggest problem so the, the old way that we declared this buffer that we're using for the USB CDC device for the endpoint so the, that's the way we define the old endpoint memory now you can't do that um, of course when I had this it was complaining like mad um, that we couldn't do it like this And there was a combination of things. It, it's not just the RTIC that was objecting to this. There were, there's a, I'm using a newer version of Rust as well, and that was clever enough to work out that we were dereferencing things, and you know, so the workaround that we did last time wasn't um, wasn't defeating it this time. But not only that, the RTIC has a different way of operating. So what what we're doing on the RT CIC is we're declaring it like this. This is the way that they've been advised that you do the, you know, static um, declarations, mutable static declarations here. And then we get a, you know, a kind of static pointer to that memory, um, which is initialized here. So we're initializing it as well. So it stops complaining about the lifetime. And then that's okay. Uh, this is the same that didn't change, but I tell you what did change in here was um, when when I came to use this, I had to wrap this in unsafe, right? And I couldn't use this way of doing it; it would not have it, right? So I use this. Uh, don't ask me where I got this from. I looked through a whole crap load. And there wasn't a lot of RTIC versions of USB that I could find, which was annoying. But I did find all sorts of little clues and things that enable me to go down this route. Okay. But I had to wrap it in the unsafe. Also, I had to, uh, you know, we were unwrapping um, the USB bus reference, usable reference. Well, I had to wrap that in unsafe as well. So there were three instances of unsafe now. Um, so obviously one of the things I had to do was comment out this because I have to allow the unsafe code. Now long term, I'm gonna see if there's a better way of doing that that doesn't involve that. But for the moment, I'm sticking with this because I spent a heck of a lot of time trying to get this working. Um, and it wasn't working yesterday. I only finally cracked it this morning after struggling uh, quite a lot with it. So that was that. I had a feeling that was going to be a problem anyhow, because we had a problem with this last time. Um, so that kind of keeps, you know, the borrow checker happy and stuff. Now the other thing that happened is there was a few other things. So if you look at this, where we're using the alternate mode for the pin, that used to say into underscore alternate mode and then underscore AF9, you know, function. Well, that's not there anymore. That doesn't work like that in the um, in the how. So uh, this, what you have is you have a generic into alternate function or you have the typed version of that uh, which looks like this which is where you have a pin uh, AF mode specification this is the way that you specify the AF mode so it does look a bit wacky but if you look um, at the rust analyzer guess uh, takes this and deals with it correctly so I had to go through and change all of those and they're not all you know alternate function nines some of them are tens um, so I had to change those and I also had to change the USB ones as well I um, hold on yeah I, the um, master clock output I changed as well I've got to do some more work on that as well with the newer version of the embedded HAL, I should be able to uh, 
also change the frequency of that is what I'm hoping that was one of the other reasons I wanted to get these changes done so that's now in the right format that's all turn up mode zero actually which is a bit odd and then um, the USB which is all turn up mode tens for those pins and I think that or those should I say are the um, of the changes to get it working on um, on Linux using Probar S and so now if I run this using this fairly simple command Oh, program USB communication error. Okay. Now, what is it that doesn't work? Let me just double check. I need to charge my phone as well. Maybe in chance of getting some food, that'd be good. So I better answer this. And I better just connect my um, charger because otherwise this is going to run out of um, juice. Um. So let me just check. So it's uh, error USB communication. Uh, let me just reset this. What what complicates this slightly is um, <laughs> I've got it connected to more than one computer, and I switched between the two, and that may have messed with it. There we go. It's running. So, um, and I'll just move this as well. Oh, this is really annoying the way this moves. So, I'm now just going to go to the HDL and run the HDL example. That should get the uh, LEDs going. Let me just turn the brightness down because it's um oh
turn it down for a moment. Um, so yeah, I can I can program it from the HDL now. So if we just go back on here, what you see is what is interesting is this. So you're not seeing all of the OC, open OCD and GDB stuff anymore. You're just seeing the output from the um, flashing from the probe RS, which is kind of cool. And you see this most importantly, which is um, Hello World, which I can show you, which is this here. So that uh, SW SWD out is working as well, which is kind of cool. Why does it say hello world? Yes, because I print that. I mean, it doesn't have to say that. It could say hello. Over. SWO. Probe. Yes. I'll run it again. There you go. Which is good. That now means I've got, um, you know, a very low overhead uh, print LN. A debug print LN that uses the um, SWD debug S SWO uh, you know output channel which doesn't steal resources from the device it's running so it doesn't need a UART or anything it uses a built-in uh, monitor output which is very very cool which is one of the big things that I wanted um, which is really nice um, in other words, I don't need to use a peripheral on the uh, STM32 to do that because that causes all sorts of problems because your peripheral itself is part of the thing that you should be testing, etc. So that's really nice. Um, Laurie Griffiths is saying, how is your ST Link version 3 connected? Um, how is it connected? Well, I've not installed any drivers or anything. That's the clever thing. I've added added it to the list of ST Link stuff, but I only did that because I was trying to get it to work with um, Open OCD. It didn't actually work. So, literally, what's happening is Probe RS is picking it up directly and talking to it directly. Quite this is massive, and I've nearly finished it. <clears throat> okay, fill it up. Program it. Ta -da. Laurie Griffiths is saying, I mean, what is the physical connection now? Well, the ST Link version 3 is just sitting on the USB and the uh, You see my finger here. I'm just using the uh, debug connector I mentioned last time to connect to the SD Link version 3. Is that what you meant? Okay. 
and everything's going up that basically uh, and the USB is appearing in um, I'll show you what it says so if I run um, oh, I can't show you on here uh, ooh, uh, let's see if I can add something quickly Can add a uh, window capture. Oh, I know what I do. I know what I do. I'll add another one. So if I do a step separate session here, um, if I run the bit that's important is this. So when I run the firmware upload, what you see is USB disconnect first and then you see new full speed USB device number 39 um, more importantly can you see that I'm using the MyStorm vendor ID vendor now not the STM32 one uh, and the product ID that that represents and I can't remember which ones those are actually um, here it says manufacturer MyStorm serial number 1234 I mean I need to change all that but um, yeah. So Laurie's saying, um, I have my ST Link version free now, but I've not looked at it yet. So I was just wondering what cable I will use to connect to the mezzanine. Well, you don't need to connect it to the mezzanine. All you will need to do is use the cable that comes with the SD Link version 3 and you don't need to add the extra board in to the uh, ST Link. Uh, just use a single board and then just use the standard miniature 1.27 mil pitch um, 10 pin, 14 pin to 10 pin connector. And then on the um, on the ice logic deck there are holes and I will supply a connector that fits in those holes um, so you, you 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 attach that connector to the cable that comes with the uh, ST-Link version 3 um, the 10 pin end and then you have to place that connector into the ice logic deck uh, board in the holes and what I've done is I've offset the hole just slightly so it's a tension fit so you don't have to solder them in you just have to place them in <clears throat> so it's not permanent and you can take them out and put them back in again if you need to and then you program it directly and you don't need to do it through the mezzanine board I've taken that away from the mezzanine now it's done directly on the uh, logic board on the logic deck So that's all nice and neat and orderly, so to speak. Oh, any other questions, Lai? Hmm? Yeah, so basically it's just USB to the ST-Link 3 and then from the ST-Link uh, 3 there's like a 14 pin connector and it's underneath the um, I wonder if I can show you. So if, I, if I bring this over here, you can see. So this is the ST Link, right? USB on one side. Then on the other side, you've got this cable. So if you turn it upside down, you'll see there is underneath here 
There is like this is like a 14 pin 1.27 mil pitch IDC connector and that goes out and then at the other end of it where it connects to here you have a 10 pin 1.27 mil pitch um, IDC connector and that I will provide the connector for that that connects into that and then plugs into the board itself if that's any help that should make it nice and clear and as I say it should be uh, um, what do they call those tension fit or whatever stress fit lock fit so you won't actually need to solder it solder it that's that's the plan anyhow I haven't tried that particular bit but it should work And in terms of under Linux, I didn't need to install any drivers or anything. The only thing I did was I added uh, uh, something to the um, ST-Link rules because I had an ST-Link's rules thing, but that's just, but it's not using that, I don't think. Um, when, when you plug it in, it comes up as a drive, as a DAV drive. I don't think they call it DAV, what do they call it? Anyhow, it will come up as um, stlink underscore v3s. You'll have a drive that comes up um, straight away when you plug it in. So there's two parts to it. There's the kind of mountable part of DAV, and then there's the stlink part of it. And I think the probe RS just talks to the, I don't know, is it, it, whether if it uses the DAV link or if it uses the st link. Um, I'm not sure which one it uses underneath the hood. I think it supports both because I think it supports DAV as well. So, enough hydration. I need to fill this up in a minute actually. So I'm going to run out. So that's where we are with all that, and it's all now marvelously after only, you know, a few days of work operating on Linux but also updated to the new HAL and using the new version of RTIC. Marvellous, absolutely marvellous. Any other questions folks? Why are you having to think? I'm just going to go and um, fill up my water. back right now more questions on that that's good so yeah quite successful but it was very very stressful getting it done um, it was because of all the different changes at once I guess and it's just a case of working through them one by one and of course the hardest one was the uh, 
you know, endpoint memory thing. That was a nightmare. A goddamn nightmare. But we now have the system working with ProVirus and it's so much simpler, which is nice. I haven't tried doing things like um, stepping and stuff. I need to look into um, how all of that's done. What did I say that we'd cover today? I need to do some documentation on that front, don't I really? On the changes. I guess. Um, those are on a slightly different window. Anything more on the Rust front before I move over to the um, docks? What do you think about the audio as well? Is that working well? Got to be an improvement over before with the laptop fan. agrees that's good all right i'm going to move over now to the uh hdl stuff because that's where the um lab notes are hold on in fact i should have done this first i might have to run a um a diff Let me just change the um, window here. It's a really annoying noise coming from the fridge. Stop now. See, I wouldn't have noticed that before because of the fan noise. Right, so I've added this note here, which is a link to the book, the lab book, which now appears here. That's the one I shared earlier. Um, I should probably put that on um, on Discord as well. I'm starting to remember. So let's just go to the and what j just so you can see what I do in order to run the um, as, as, as soon as I run the firmware I have to first run obviously that which I don't need to this time then I need to run you know where, whatever it is I'm running in this case it's just the LED test thing and that's running the uh, DSPI version not the counting version um, so I can just I can change that so I remember
one to eight. Right, it's running the counter now. Let me turn the um, brightness down slightly. So let's have a look at the documentation. So if we go to the lab and we look at the source and we go to, let's look at the summary first. Summary. So the setup here What I'm thinking is what does that point to? Does it have to point to an actual book or can it just point to the readme on the board specific repository? Um, if we look at the readme, that doesn't say a lot at the moment. Um, There's two parts to it. There's um on, on the the black crab side of things. It talks about how you set it up. Given that we've just gone to ProBRS, that's going to be different. Uh, I'm just wondering if I need to update that. Rather than this. Um, let me just put a placeholder in first here. So um, I guess what we should have is let's probably need um, so we got the logic deck. <clears throat> Let's put links in here just for the moment so we've got them, I guess. I mean, I actually have some pages for Black Crab. Here. We might not need those. Because I'm probably going to link to the Black Crab repository.
Let's just switch back to Black Crab and make some notes on what we said earlier. So it's probably a good, good thing to do. So if we look at the README for Black Crab, oh yeah, so this is going to be rather different. Right, yeah, this is going to be different because, so this is, what's this, black crab, rust, cargo, that's the same. This is now redundant, or at least in the, um, in the um, ProVirus version. So these could be considered specific to the windows. Hmm. Okay. See, this is wrong. Oh, wait a minute. Is that the, uh, yeah, is that, what's that? That's for the ST link. But that's not going to work for the ST link free. So that's out of date as well. So there's two sets of instructions here. The one that we have, which is kind of out of doubt, out of date, unless you're on. Hmm. Yes, so, ooh, crikey. Um, these instructions don't make sense on the new version. I'm going to have to change these quite dramatically. Required setup. Dump. So you won't need those two top ones anymore. All that. But at the moment, the solution is um, Linux specific. So I yeah, got this working on Windows. <coughs> the Probe RS. So we've got a problem with this. I think I change oh I changed the greeting. I'm gonna add 
I'm just wondering, does, does Black Crab need its own book? Or just read these? Let me, let me add another file in here called Let's add a book. Right, let me just remember. to Yeah, I'm going to make a directory called lab and I'm going to create a book in here, I think. Actually. Yeah, yeah, I'll come on. Just trying to remember how I did this before. Um, what I actually want to do is MDB, sorry, MD book. That's just um, uh, 
have a look here. Um, hi, I post. Yeah, I'll respond to that in a sec. Let me just do this first. So um, <clears throat> what iPost is saying is for some reason your audio is mono on the left side. Is that any better on my post? Hydrate. Um, yeah, I don't know how <coughs> how late you've come in, but um, I'm streaming from my uh, Linux desktop now, not the laptop. Hence, you don't have all that horrible. <laughs> Uh, fan noise and stuff so the audio is much better but there's loads of settings as well it's going to take me a while to catch up with all the settings <laughs> notice there wasn't a buzz no white noise Okay, so the black crab set up. Uh. So we should make some notes here. So what were the requirements? So on the requirements here, we had If you notice anything that I'm missing here from what you've tried, um, anyone, if you've tried the black crab stuff, probably on black ice, um, let me know.
over there. I don't know why I put Minicom there. I don't really use that. No, I mean, um, set up instructions, Laurie. I know the UART's missing. That's, that's on the uh, to-do list for... Um, fact. Oh, I thought I updated that. Maybe I didn't. Oh, hope I'm not creating any merge issue for myself here. Probably am. Yeah, this is out of date. Interesting. Maybe I didn't commit this last time because we'd added um, a bunch of stuff, if I remember rightly. <laughs> Always do that every single time. Oh, stop it, honestly. What was the other ones that were on the list? What were we just talking about? You art, wasn't it?
I'm just looking at uh, what iPost is saying here. Did you see the Risk Five proc built using nanotubes? I did not. I post. I will have a look at that. MIT engineers build advanced microprocessor out of carbon nanotubes. Ooh, that sounds cool. Ooh. Yeah, I will look at that. It looks very cool. Interesting. Uh, add UART support. So on the UART support, that's from uh, STM. Um, Sending the markup. Okay, right. Um, yes, yeah, so that's added in there now. We seem to have lost some stuff on that to do. Because I'm sure we added those things in. This also doesn't have the uh, Amarat examples. She's old. Okay. <clears throat> what else might be missing from that list that you can think of?
Yeah, you called it something like you are to CDC ACM before. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I may be creating a few issues for myself here. Merge issues, because clearly the branch that I pulled off to start this work was not containing everything that was on the Windows version. <sighs> I'm going to have to, um, I'm probably going to be in merge hell. Hopefully it shouldn't be too bad because I don't think the code stuff has changed. I'm, I'm purposely not changing any of that at the moment, apart from the Rust stuff. <clears throat> but I will need to refactor all this. Um, right, okay. Anyhow, I'm just glad that this stream is working and OBS hasn't crashed or, uh, you know, core dumped or anything, which is very good. And the cameras are working and everything else. Have I had any cutouts? Because the frame rate seems good. Frames missed due to lending rate. Skip frames due to encoding lag. Seems to say zero. Average frames per second 60. Average time during the three milliseconds. Um, so it actually seems to be working better than the previous setup. you know, on the laptop, on the Windows laptop, which is interesting. Yeah, it says zero dropped frames. Hmm. That's excellent. Very impressed. Right. Um, so are, any, are there any questions? Because that's as far as I'm going to take it this evening. Because um, I really need to get something to eat. Because uh, I'm starving. So I'll ask you questions now. Before I call it a day. Um, we were about two hours in, I think, roughly. So, um, the setup's good, which is nice. I really like that. I'm really pleased. As I said, I'm going to have some merge help to deal with, with these changes, but everything is now operating the way it should do. So, um, yeah, that's good. Um, I might do a stream later in the week, possibly if I get get further with this stuff, but um, we will see, because I've still got some hardware to do this week. Um, uh, some of the, board, I'm changing some of the tiles, so that's a bit of a pain. Um, and I'm part way through that. So I've got to finish off that this week. Um, this switch over to the desktop has taken two days out of my schedule. Um, I say just switch over to the desktop, but I've done all the other things like get ProBRS running and updated the code so it now runs on later versions of things like Arctic and, and how. So, if there's no more questions, I'm going to call it uh, for this evening's stream. And as I say, I may do some of it later on. I'm glad that you got Wi-Fi, Laurie, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah, are you saying? <laughs> I 
I tell you what, Laurie. Yeah, um, uh, Auto Mod is asking uh, me whether I should allow your comment <laughs> because of reason, race, ethnicity, or religion. It's because you say Chinese in it. <laughs> it's very funny. Uh, yes, I am going to hit the Chinese New Year problem, I think. I don't think there's any way I'm going to have it ready in time to avoid that. I've been thinking about that a lot. I mean, in some ways it's better because um, it buys me a bit more time to get all of the things um, changed and tested. Um, so I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of bringing myself round to the conclusion that it's likely to come after the Chinese New Year, not before. Although there's still a slim chance. Um, or I could do some before and some after maybe, but I don't know. Yeah. Probably after at this rate would be my guess. However, it does enable me to solve a few more issues and do a few bit more on the um, tile front than I was originally going to do. Any other questions before I go? Thanks. Pinging me again. Okay, guys and girls, I'm going to call it an evening then. Um, and as I say, hopefully, I might do another stream because this has been so successful this evening um, on. Um, possibly Friday is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, depending how well I get on on the hardware stuff that I've got to do between now and then. So in the meantime, thanks for joining me. Um, we will continue the discussion down on um, Discord. And um, I'll, I'll take a look at that uh, processor post. The carbon nanotubes because that looks kind of cool. Ciao, and uh, see you next time.